Hey everybody, Annie here, and uh, we are going to continue our journey through the Central Shroud. Um, just a bit of news for folks, about 100 people at my workplace were laid off a couple days ago, myself included, so it looks like I will have more time, at least in the short term, to make some content and start streaming. So tomorrow I will be um, streaming the beginning of my journey as a Hrothgar. There's going to be a lot of lore mixed in with this stuff guys and we're gonna learn a ton about things we still haven't really gotten to experience so today though we are back in central shroud and we're gonna come over to this southern area here and talk a little bit more in depth about what's going on over there so as you may well know um we have the Dungeon Tamterra Deepcroft here in the Central Shroud. Uh, for those who are not keen on exactly what Tamterra's lore is, um, that it was actually a Gelmoran necropolis. So when the Gridanians had been ousted by the elementals and told that they could no longer um, stay in Gridania or in the area before the city of Gridania was created. This was where they were living underground in this big necropolis. Um, the final boss, Galvanth, was the king of those Ellison, uh, and he was essentially corrupted and necromancied, I guess, um, by a cult called the Lambs of Dalamut, and now he's host to a mind player. So that's why you see that final boss that looks kind of like Cthulhu. So let's see what we've got here. The mirror planks. Walking the plank. Wailthoth, a local of the mirror planks, wants you to help deliver goods that have been unloaded at the pier. Ah, perfect! You're just in time to help deliver some goods that arrived not moments ago. Allow me to double check my manifest. Mm -hmm. Now, listen carefully. Take the suit of plate, mail, to Drana Mert. He's the guard you see right over there. The moon two beans belong to Kylie, and the smoke crayfish balls to my friend Berg here. That's it for this load. A strapping adventurer like you should barely work up a sweat, am I right? The cargo you're looking for hasn't moved since they unloaded it at the end of the pier. Much obliged. This guy is standing right next to this dude. What in the world? Okay. Anyway. Uh, we are here at the Mirror Planks. This is a link to the Lavender Beds, which is the housing in the Gridania City State area. We are going to go take some people some goods. So. Let's talk a little bit more about the Lambs of Dolomid. So this is a cult that believes that the moon of Dolomid, the one that crashed creating the seventh Umbral Era, is actually a deity of, of their own, right? So basically he's a god. One, two, three, no, this won't do it all. I'm sure I heard Walt mention the shipment had. Oh. Why, thank you very much. It would have been short afternoon fishing if this bait hadn't arrived. Alright, so we delivered that. Yeah, so this cult got really mad when um, Dalamund was destroyed and crashed down on the realm. And they consider anybody who had a hand in that to be heretics. And they were essentially like bent on revenge. And their way of doing this is waking up and corrupting dead people with void scent powers and sending them off to I mean, reap destruction, I guess, so to speak. Hmm, uh, you have something for me? Yes, I have some plate mail. Oof, what a, ah, my new plate mail, and what a wood whaler, what would a wood whaler want with metal armor, you ask? Let's just say that after a number of engagements with Garlean heavy infantry, infantry, my mind has been open to the protection that such steel encasements can provide makes sense right you're like mm, they've got steel maybe I should have steel all right Kylie 
He should be here by now. Mutu bean delivery. Hmm, are these my Mutu beans? Praise the matron. It is my job to pick up provision from the pier and deliver them to settlements in the area, but I couldn't leave without the beans. Now I can finish loading my car and be on my way. Thank you for your help. All right, we'll go back and talk to Walthrop. Walthiev. All done. Excellent work. Swift and sure. Adventurers are such handy individuals to have around. I can't, like, it was like two feet. Dude. If we leave cargo piled up at the pier, the next crew has no room to unload their ship, you see. Hey, it sounds like California. It can be backbreaking work, but someone has to do it. Apparently me. For whatever reason. Alright, so... Yeah, so basically, you know, people think of the moons as... You know, they're, they're essentially a part of, of the lore and the history. Um, for example, Menfina is known as the keeper of the twin moons, right? Um, there is a lot of artistry um, that essentially in past times... Um, personify the greater moon as a manifestation of a goddess and the lesser moon was supposed to be like her daughter right um sometimes her daughter sometimes her lantern or most commonly her loyal hound so the moon was actually a doggo which is now sad because there's no more moon let's see what else would Waltheus like me to do besides his entire job apparently can i interest you in another job this one will ask a little more of your skills i promise what I need is for you to swat some of these hornet swarms you see buzzing about the place and collect their husks. About four bags worth should be enough. Hmm, what am I going to do with a pile of dead biokin? Well, the sooner you give them to me, the sooner you'll find out. Okay. So, anyway, um, when Nal Van Darnus actually did cause Delma to, to descend and create the most recent calamity. Um, it it kind of had this like ominous red glow as it dropped down into Eorzea, um, and there was a lot of rumors about the cause of that. Um, the biggest one being that Menphilia, Menfina's hound was bathed in the blood of those who would do his mistress harm, and soon we would all be bathed in blood, which is essentially kind of what happened. I mean, it was, after all, a calamity. Um, so basically now we've got this doomsday cult kind of resurrecting all these people. And here in the Town Terra dungeon, you have the old king of the people who decided they did not want to move back up to the surface after the elementals allowed for the speaking races to be brought back into the forest uh being cthulhu at the bot at the end of the dungeon that's pretty much what we got um the cultists themselves are of the belief that if they are to die in pursuit of you know their vengeance for dalmund that it is actually like their god will be like, yeah, you know, great job, they're gonna, he's gonna come down to the heavens or hells, the gates of the seventh hell, and return all of them to Eorzea once he becomes the god in Eorzea, so to speak, which is essentially what their goal is. And they'll be praised for, for giving their lives for the cause, essentially. Um, a couple of other areas we'll see someday that uh, have that same sort of thing is uh, Am Amdapur Keep. They have also, the, the cult has also done some crazy stuff there. You have the husks? Good, good. Hand them over then. Ah, these are perfect. Hope they didn't sing you too terribly. Now all we do is take some bottles of liquor and squeeze these beauties inside like so. And there we have it, a fresh batch of my special sting brew. The ranchers of Bent Branch Meadow put in order for a bottle quite some time ago, but gathering those husks is always such a chore. I mean, speaking of chores, would you mind taking this to them as soon as you're able to? The last year after goes by the name Margot. 
give her the sting brew along with my regards. Oh, uh, apologize for the delay, would you? Dude, this guy is lazy. Okay, so it looks like we're going back up here to Bent Branch Meadows to go turn this in. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, how, how Dolomud feels about this whole thing, or if he, you know, can anymore since he was blown up when he landed and broke in pieces above the Orzea and spit out Bahamut, uh, as one does. Um, so, yes, I am Margot. How might I? Here is some sting brew. Ah, the sting brew at last. I am aware of what must be done to acquire this, and I'm most grateful to you. Few folk are willing to run towards this form of wrathful hornets. Ordinarily, this liquor is drunk for the unique and not altogether unpleasant stinging sensation it causes one's tongue. It is, however, also an indispensable tool for repelling insects. We sprinkle it over the fields where the geisel greens are planted. Thanks to you, the crops will be untouched by pests this year. I hope one of the well-fed chocobos can return the favor by serving you as a mount someday. I have a mount. Of course, you know, if I was doing these side quests at the appropriate level, then I wouldn't, so that makes sense. All right, so heading this way. Coming back down here, we'll pick up this quest here at Galvin's Spire. Galvin, of course, being the final boss in Tamtara that we've been talking about, who has been corrupted by a Mind Flayer. And we have apparently a Spire named after him. Finia has work for a meddlesome adventurer. Wow, that's kind of rude. Like, are you meddlesome? Come do this job for me if you consider yourself meddlesome. We kind of messed up. Another god's damn adventurer. Desperate to stick your nose in everyone's business, is it? Then seek out the groundskeeper of the Tamterra Deep Crop. You'll find him in a shack just outside the entrance, as the hermit is all too happy to live close to his work. When last I patrolled the area, I could hear him swearing inside a shack from the road. I know not what vexes the man, but I suspect he'll welcome your presence more than I. Alright, that guy's rude. Man, some of the Gridanian folks are like... They just really are not a fan of outsiders. All right, Bilar, what up? After a bit of work, are ye? I've got a task what needs doing. Take these Amelia lilies and lead them on top of each barrow. You've doubtless seen the bones returned to life by foul magic, shambling around and harassing their surviving comrades. It hurts me soul to see it, adventure. I cannot abide such blasphemy. Do not blaspheme. Tis we hope that these lilies soothe their spirits and help them return to the matron's bosoms. See me when you finish. Alright, so we're gonna go put some flowers on the graves. And then we will go visit down here to the south, the hedge tree. Alright, here's a flower. You can call me flower if you want to. I don't mind. Alright, um, this is kind of a neat, like, kind of like an ancient burial ground thing. I don't know if it's ancient, but it's old. <laughs> Alright, let's see. So this one has circling purple thing, which probably means bad guys. A glow fly. Sometimes being an archer makes us insanely easy. I don't even have to be facing the dude. Okay. Alright, we have put the lilies on top of the borrows, which will somehow stop them from coming back to life and being skeletons and zombies. I'm a fan of this plan. You have done holy work this morning, lass. I can fathom what could drive the dead to rise up and seek to do us harm, but I pray that this helps put an end to it. May the matron watch over and keep you safe. Yeah. Sweet. Alright, so let's go visit the hedge tree, folks. So, for those who don't know, um, the shroud, the black shroud, like the entire forest, 
is um, the hedge tree. It is guarded in a sense. Like there's the, there's a shield of sorts that covers the forest. Um, it's a protective barrier that kind of keeps the twelve wood from harm. Um, and this barrier is actually basically it's maintained by these hedge trees. So they're considered sacred. Um, and they, you can see here, got some nifty little, oh, that's cool, like little jewelry on it. Um, so this is one of the trees that holds up the protective barrier around the twelve wood and helps keep Gridania safe. Um, and there is a, like a, the botanist guild will send people to come and investigate the trees and make sure they're healthy because um, all of these little rose-like guys that are floating around, they like to plant their seeds um, near the tree. Like they get lodged in the soil and in the trunk and the tree limbs and they'll sprout and the roselet saplings will actually like send a root like deep to the bottom of the tree and it'll divert the flow of nutrients to its own body which can you know wither the tree which is not helpful for protecting the bar barrier right so they come around here to take a look at that every once in a while as well All right, let's go back up here. We're going to take a look at what we have here for the slimy hollows back in Galvin's spire. Here's the spire. I mean, I guess they have a spire named after him because originally he was one of their kings, so that kind of makes sense. Finia, a guard at Galvin's spire, seeks a willing volunteer to deal with a slug problem. Hmm, you must be desperate for indeed if you would speak with me a second time. Either that or you have never learned to leave well enough alone. But if you're so bloody eager, then here's another job for you. Head on over to the hedge tree and clear out some nests of saprophagus slugs. All you need to do is sprinkle some of the slag ale on the ground where you find the moist depressions. You should soon be up to your armpits and slugs. Don't let any of the buggers slither away. Make sure you find, clear, find and clear out all three nests. Alright, so we're gonna go clear out the bugs, even though this guy is rude AF to us. I don't really understand why he feels the need to be mean to me when I'm doing a bunch of work for him, but you know, I guess I guess that's not always normal that's not always a indication of treatment, right? <clears throat> Blizzard. Alright, so Killing the sarcophagus slug. He's got a big AOE. Gotta keep the area by the hedge tree clean. It's weird that I'm using ale for this. A little bit, you know, like flat ale. I mean, I guess if it's like sweet, maybe? I don't know. I don't know enough about slugs or insects to, uh, to have a professional opinion on that, I guess. All right, one more. A squelching sound, this sounds moist. Which is not great. Alright. And in case you guys wanted to, to see it, I know everyone does actually see it in the, uh, the MSQ, but, you know, sometimes we're just rushing through, not paying too much attention, and it's a little, uh, difficult. But here, we have... The entrance to Tamterra Deepcroft. Around here, oh, here we go. Right here. So, 
I'll, also, you might notice, recognize this place from the little guild hess things that you can do. Um, that's just like the outer um, grave area. Judging by the looks of you, no slug escaped unharmed. Hmm, don't suppose you have the faint, faintest notion what the Tamtar deep craft is, do you? Hey, I was just telling everybody that, so maybe if you weren't so rude, you would already know that. It's the final resting place of those who perished during the calamity. The slugs you so handily dispatched were feeding on the flowers we had laid there in remembrance of the fallen. The monsters multiply and food grows scarce. Perhaps there was naught else for them to feed on. But to see those wreaths that served us was more than I could bear. And now I've said too much. Here, take your reward and leave me be. Aw, so he's not like a total jerk. He's just mostly a jerk. Huzzah! We leveled up! Alright, guys. We have now seen the mirror planks. We've taken a look at the spire, visited the sacred hedge tree, and talked about Tamterra Deepcroft and, and the cult. All of that good stuff. So we are going to call it a day and we're going to go visit my home. And just like I said I would, I decided on a stage, which I have, and I'm going to place now on downstairs. Still looking for help though, if anybody actually <laughs> has any other opinions for the house. I was thinking it would be so cool if I could get like a troop together to do like like plays and stuff downstairs on my stage and we can do like the history or lore of Eorzea. Ooh, maybe I should move this bookshelf first. And how absolutely fabulous that would be. Uh, can I, I'm, just, I'm really bad at using this housing system guys, so uh, don't mind me. Okay, oh, that messed it up already. Move, rotate. Why won't it rotate? Alright, well, um, I'll just move it for now. We'll deal with that later. As you can see, I do that with a lot of things around here. Alright. So, I should have in my bags here somewhere. There it is. My troop stage. Big ol' square stage. Um, maybe leave some space behind for a few things. So, we could perform plays here, talk about, you know, the creation stories, and the seven hells, and the different calamities, and I don't know, but I would definitely need people to actually do that, unless I wanted to try to write some kind of weird one-woman <laughs> play with lore, I don't know. Actually, that might be interesting. Uh, anyway, if you guys have any cool ideas of ways that I can handle the lighting in here with the stage, or different housing items that might complement the stage itself, please let me know. I'm always looking for help. In the meantime, I will let you guys go. You guys have a fabulous afternoon. Stay happy.